Anyway, here at Arm, very special place for many different reasons. But one of them is it's one of the few places that you can see all six of our native reptiles. Now, last time we were here for Spring Watch, we managed to see five of them. As we walk over, I want you to name the five. OK, we saw the snakes. So we saw adder, smooth snake and grass snake. And we saw two of the lizards, common lizards and sand lizard. So which one didn't we see? We didn't see the slow the worm. The slow worm. But I'm going to give some love to the slow worm now because we've got a couple in here. We've got two adults and I'm going to show you the two different ones. Now, this is a female and you can see it's light and it has this very distinctive stripe here. I'm going to ask you to hold that oh, for okay. a second while I get the male out. I have to be careful because they all totemize. Well, actually, I mean, I've been given permission to hold them, but if you do see them, please don't pick them up. Not a good idea, just leave them be. This is the male and you can see he's basically one color and he's got a, a much more defined head. So I've got the male. Chris has got the female. So there we go. They live for about 20 years. They've been really misunderstood. People used to think they were blind, poisonous, fearsome creatures that you shouldn't go anywhere near. I mean, clearly they're not. They're not blind. They're not poisonous. They haven't got a sting. They're not fearsome creatures that you should avoid. Um, and also, people used to think that they were snakes. Well, they're not snakes. They're called a slow worm. They're not worms. They're not snakes. So what are they? Well, they're legless lizards. And we're going to go over to this marvellous prop to show you why they're lizards and not snakes. Well, first of all, snakes can't blink, whereas lizards can. So you're going to show the old blinking. They've got an eyelid. So our slow worm is a lizard because it can blink. A little wink. Something a little, a little wink there, look. Eyelid. Let's take a look at the tongues. Now, we all know that snakes have a forked tongue. Show the tongue. OK, okay sorry. OK, I right, just was too busy and winking. Our, our look, sand lizard. Here's the forked tongue of the snake. Yeah. Our slow worm, I mean, our slow worm, but it's a lizard, has a notched tongue. OK, and if you look at the neck, you see the snake has quite a defined neck. And our slow worm, which is a lizard, doesn't that's typical of a lizard and also the scales are very different it's very smooth scales on yep. our slow worm and we've got a representation of that here so these approximate to snake scales and you can see they're large they're separated very often they're keeled so they're quite rough to the touch and beneath those if you lift them up there's a very flexible skin and that allows snakes to swallow things which as you know are larger than the size of, of their head if you contrast that with the scales of the slow worm, you can see that they're much smaller. Some of them appear triangular, some like a trapezium in shape. Uh, but then, if you put them under a very powerful microscope, this is what they look like. Along the edge of the scale here, you can see all of these little notches and they're little thorny cusps. We call them denticles. And they are about three mu in length. That's point zero 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 three of a millimetre. So they are very, very small indeed. But obviously, they're there for a purpose. And we think that they're to give them some grip because these animals are highly fossorial. They're constantly moving through the undergrowth. They're moving through soft soils and grass, which can shift and move. They're not solid objects that they're moving through where they can get a purchase like the snakes. These are flexible substrates. So they need to be able to grip them quite it's, you know, well, and we think that it's these denticles, these tiny little cusps on their scales, which give them the capacity to do that. I've, I've just gone back here so I can appreciate them, but if we're talking grip, they also have backward facing teeth. Do you oh, want to demonstrate? We've got yep. some backward facing okay. I've teeth. I've got backward there, facing we? teeth. I certainly <laughs> got those for you. Yep. So okay. They can there we are. Look their that. prey, which is usually slimy, covered in mucus, things like snails and slugs and worms. So they're pretty fascinating creatures, aren't they? And I should say that this is not an exaggeration. The teeth are very large for a lizard and they're long and sharp, ideal for grabbing that slippery stuff, as you say. Now, what about slow worms? They're not one of our rarest reptiles. That would fall to the sand lizard and the smooth snake, of course. In fact, you might see them in your gardens or certainly on allotments where there are lots of compost heaps. They like those. 
Surveys show that they occur in 300,000 kilometre squares in the UK. But nevertheless, sadly, like so many other things, they are declining. Principally habitat loss, particularly building on brownfield sites where they can prosper. So if you've got slow worms on your allotment, in your garden, then do everything you can to look after them. Make sure you've got those compost heaps, they like those. And if you're living in urban and suburban areas, quite a lot of them get predated by cats and you can help protect them from that by having something for them to hide under. Some logs or some tin is ideal. That gives them the capacity to worm, warm up early in the morning and move about into that substrate without exposing themselves to predation. So yeah, a bit of gardening for slow worms would certainly help.